have it again. Yeah. Let's just keep stabbing it. Keep stabbing. Felt the passed out. And we murdered it, I think. Let's see. Dog corpse. Yep. Okay. Well, we can skin the dog corpse. Where's my shiv? Do not. Oh well. I use the that was the shiv there. And the trapping. Some small chunks of. Uh, and a lot of meat. Confirm. Clear all that out. Now let's put all this new materials into the campsite here. Pliers, sharp edge, electrician skill, electrical parts. Okay, I've got the mechanical parts in my bag somewhere in my pocket okay so we can put four of them in there as required by the recipe a sharp edge and we can put one of them I need to get pliers before I can do that thing. Back to me. I can take them back. Alright. There's another dog there. Which I don't really care about. Time to... I didn't get hurt, did I? Nope, I'm still good. I'm not actually bleeding anymore. But I don't have anywhere to put the rags, so I'll leave them on. Moving up towards that city. End of my turn. Yeah, that dog doesn't want to mess with us. It's a scavenging point. What's here? With my botany, I find edible things. Let's eat some. Yep, looks like a well slaked. Drink some water. Okay, moving on, another city tile, what can we scavenge here, apartment buildings, yes, with the lighter, nothing, and a turn, try again, this apartment building, with the lighter, also nothing, there's stuff on the ground already, more parts, more string, more rags. Take those parts. I'll leave the rest there. I still want to find more houses. Let's look up here a bit more. We're out of turns. There's another residential. Oh! So pick your way through overgrown ruins. The peculiar sound. Something that I can't read because of the recording overlay becomes audible. Disabused but picked up again in a moment. Just carried by something. Distant humming, like small gas engines, out of place in the stillness of the empty forest and abandoned buildings. Right, I heard a sound. Can I investigate the sound? No, it doesn't look like I can. Moving on. Wow, look at this place. 
Zom Zoms, a place to eat. That's exciting. Yeah, what do I find here? Scavenge house, mobile home, storage shed. House with a lighter, nothing. Scavenge mobile home with a lighter. Ah, here are some items. A shoe. I still left the other shoe behind, didn't I? Olive coloured hoodie, I'll wear that. More parts, more bags, more string. I don't really have room to carry any of this stuff. None of it's all that useful either. There's still one more scavenge option here. Storage shed. Just the lighter. Nothing. Okay, let's go to Zom Zom's, a place to eat. I want to move my recording overlay out of the way so I can read what's in there. Yeah, the settings to do this. Um, that must be elsewhere in the actual program. Just a second. Eye slabs, shoes, and sundry items. Look like there are definitely some items that accept more than others, at least today. Hmm. Right, well, I must go 
rope is worth a lot. My lighter is worth a bit. I'll offer the lighter. You offer your item, which she stashes in a metal locker. Hand, she demands, reaching for a stamp as you present your hand. She applies a symbol and number, then nods to another grizzly merc. He checks you for weapons. He tosses your confiscated items into another bin and ushers you down the trailer. Okay, so I've lost my spear. Inside, it's one part super dub, super club, one part gladiator pit. A wall of sound assaults your ears as you cross the threshold. Part human cacophony, part generator exhaust, mo mostly frenetic industrial music, and the smell of food and smoke. You can't hear it over the noise, but you can feel your stomach rumble at the smell of sweet barbecue. The cavernous warehouse is dominated by a dirt floored arena with high mesh walls. Spectators ring the pit on three sides, the fourth reserved for a large garage door leading outside into the tarp fenced courtyard. Beyond the door, you catch the flash of welding arcs where it appears scrapyard robots are being prepped. And opposite the garage door, the thing you really care about right now, a wide booth with grills spewing sweet and spicy smoke into the rafters above. People clamour to get at it and walk away with their prize smeared over hands and lips alike. Barbecue. I wonder what kind of meat it is. Is it people meat? You wade through dirty patrons, intent on manhandling some ribs or beans and rice. Or whatever it is they've got cooking over there. Who knows how long you've been in cryo? How long's it been since you led your last hot meal? Pressing your way through the final wall of hungry patrons, you get an elbow on the counter and desperately try to make eye contact with one of the servers. A few eternal minutes later, one of the apron-clad food slingers glances your way and you nod like an excited dog. He reaches into a smoker box, withdraws a loaded skewer and places it in your hands. Sweet, succulent barbecue. Savouring it at first, you start to grow paranoid that it'll be snatched from your hands. You bear down on it with renewed fervour, huddling with it against your lips as you absently walk away from the grill. This meat, it's like good, fully developed veal, not young, but not yet beef. Yes, very definitely like that, and not like any other meat you've tasted. In fact, so much that you think no person with a palate of ordinary normal sensitiveness could distinguish it from veal. But maybe it's really people? It is mild, good meat, with no other sharply defined or highly characteristic taste, just as fringes, goat, high game, and pork have. Or maybe it's not long pork, then. The steak is slightly tougher than prime veal, a little stringy, but not too tough or stringy to be agreeably edible. The roast is tender and in and roast is tender and in colour, texture, smell, as well as taste. Strengthens your certainty that all the meats you habitually know, veal is one of them meat to which this meat is accurately comparable. Just then, an announcer pipes up. With the same oscillating voice, every strip club DJ seems to have, he starts hyping the crowd. Can you count, suckers? He shouts. Patrons start yelling back. I said, can you count, suckers? On cue, a testosterone fuel of fueled wave of shouts comes from the door. Raise those numbers, he calls with expectation. And everyone raised their fists in unison. The music changes, lights switch to UV, and numbers appear on all the stamped hands. Your heart starts to race as you realise what's happening. Looking around, everyone has a stamp. Most like yours, they all have numbers, but it's clear now what the symbols are. Patrons like you have silhouettes of vultures next to the numbers. The, those unlucky few who don't have lambs. The announcer calls a number, a low number. Feeling somewhat relieved, you raise your hand above your head. Patrons around you look up to it for a moment then continue scanning the crowd. A scream of protest erupts from the far side of the arena. Everyone nearby looks across where a commotion is starting. A man is hoisted into the air like a crowd surfer at a concert and propelled across, propelled to the arena gate. Patrons claw the remainder of his barbecue from his falling hands, fighting over it like dogs. Guards wrangle the struggling man and toss him onto the dirt floor in the arena as the gate is sealed behind him. The winner is a filthy, weak, and confused-looking human. As he clamours to his feet, a clacking sound and squeaking sound crescendos from the opposite side of the arena. Cheers start erupting through the warehouse as the source of the noise rolls into the arena through the garage door. The bot is little more than a heavy, treaded ring of barbed spikes. A haphazardly hung LED ticker sits atop its mass, flickering the words, Morning Star, confirming your suspicions as to its nature. Without pausing,